Hi, you've probably read a lot about uh, ChatGPT and seen a lot of videos about it. I'm going to be no different to anybody else because I'm talking about it too. But I'm looking specifically from the viewpoint of librarians and information professionals and explaining why librarians and information professionals need to be involved with ChatGPT as soon as possible and get a really good handle on how it works. Should start by saying I've already done some searches and got the results on the screen. Um, it was busy when I was doing the searches so there was quite a lot of buffering and lagging. Um, so I've just simply saved the, the results that I've got and displaying them on the screen. Suffice to say it does pull up the content that I need very quickly. So on the right hand side of the screen we've got my query and the answers. Over on the left hand side of the screen just here we can see the chats that I've had previously and it allows me to go back and look at some of those uh, if I need to in the future. But let's just shift our focus to my search screen. So the first thing I've asked for is what were the causes of the American Civil War and what ChatGPT has done is it has given me a nice summary of the particular event. It's quite a long summary that we've got on the screen here. Google can do the same kind of thing with snippets but it's not terribly good or it might link through to Wikipedia and I've still got to find the information that I need. So immediately what ChatGPT is doing is it understands the query that I've got, it's gone off, it's found the data, it's brought it back, it's summarised it for me and it's made it available for me on the screen. Now this is for the majority of people exactly what they want. They don't want to search for information, they want to find it, they want to have it presented to them in one single packet and that's exactly what ChatGPT is able to do. We're very shortly going to find the idea of just being given up a lot of URLs as a particularly bizarre thing because we've still got to go and find the data that we want from those. This is not a helpful way of finding the information that we need. What I can do with um, the answer that I've got here though is I can say to ChatGPT that I want it to work with that data and provide it for me in different formats. So I can now say please summarise all of that into one paragraph and it will then summarise that data for me in as I've asked for one paragraph. I might have said summarise it in a way that makes sense to uh, a school child or I could say give me a summary that emphasises the military aspect of the Civil War. And ChatGPT will go out there again, get the content and return it for me and give me the answer that I need. So it's much more flexible about giving me the, the data that's required, which Google and the other search engines are simply unable to do. However, if you do want websites and you don't want to just trust the data that's being given to you, and indeed why should you? Really big question on that. I've now said to it, Give me some websites that cover the Civil War suitable for school children. So what it's now done is it, it's given me uh, resources that I can then go and have a look at. It's very easy for ChatGP to, to say these are good tools for school children. That's a really difficult search to be able to run um, otherwise. And it's given me the results, it's given me some websites I can go to and it's also given me a nice potted summary of why those websites are good for the purpose that they are that I have asked them for. Again, this is not something your traditional search engines are terribly good at being able to do. So I've got a list of websites and I can then go off and have a look at them if I wish to. And what's also interesting here is that it does say at the bottom there, these are a few examples of websites that might help students. Um, and but it's also saying it's important to note that websites should be reviewed by teachers or parents to ensure their content's appropriate for their students. And I think that's a really good point for this to make and it's exactly the kind of thing that librarians would be saying. If I decide that I do want to do some searching however I can say to ChatGPT that I want a good search string to use with Google and I've asked for it here uh, to make it slightly more complicated to limit my search to academic websites. It's done exactly what I would expect it to. It's given me the search operator site edu and explained why that's useful. It's also given me a site AC UK, so it's given me the UK version as well. It's given me uh, different filters and so on. So again, it's acting as a almost like a librarian in its own right by advising me on how I can best put my search together. I can then say, can you suggest a good uh, journal or magazine that I can use? And it's given me a variety of examples here. What this tool does is it tends to be rather more verbose than uh, not 
and so you do tend to get quite a lot of content and I've got the list of journals or magazines here with an explanation as to why they're useful ones. It doesn't give me the URLs but I could then go back and ask that question again simply by saying now give me um, the data in a tabular format and include as one of the columns the URL of the journals that you have mentioned so I can get it to manipulate the data that I'm getting from it and I can get it produced in a variety of different formats. I can't do that with traditional search. Um, I've now uh, uh, asked it to give me a list of well-regarded authors of non-fiction and three fictional works based around the Civil War and I've got some examples here of authors and some books that I could then go off and have a look at if I wished to. What ChatGPT is doing is it is able to go and get the data for me. It can summarize that for me. It can We can manipulate the data. I can get it presented to me in a variety of different formats. It can do that exceptionally quickly and I'm having to do less and less work and I can simply have a conversation with the chatbot to get the data that I need. This is why it's so important to get a good understanding of what this AI is doing when it comes to search because the idea of traditional search of just giving you a list of websites that you can go to is now already out of date. It looks archaic. It's extremely unhelpful. There are lots of queries and problems that we've got with um, this particular tool and I'll cover those as well. But in general, I'm having looked at the internet for the last 30 plus years. This is probably the most excited I've ever been about search and it's one of the really biggest seismic changes to search on the internet that we've ever had and it's the, one of the biggest seismic changes to the internet since the introduction of Web2 and social media. It really is that big and that important and information professionals have to get a very good understanding of how all of this is working sooner rather than later because things are changing extraordinarily quickly as we'll find out in other videos so do like and follow and I'll update you on other ways in which ChatGPT can be used with the information community thank you very much